Hello, my name is Melissa Umbach and today I'm going to be sharing with you um, a step-by-step -step how to paint the sacred grove. I think I've got it down to a to kind of a step-by-step -step maneuver, so wish us all luck. Um, first of all I wanted to share with you that um, it's, it's just stuff that I've bought from the dollar store so that it should be easily accessible and and um, not hard to find and they're not expensive. This particular canvas that I'm going to be using for the demo is 12 by 12 inches by uh, what is that? 12 by 16 or 16 by 12, however you want to say it, um, and you can do it landscape this way, you can do it portrait, um, you can do different sizes, here's an 8 by 10, um, and you can still, because this is, you're going to have to live with this, and it's going to live in your house, so if you want it 8 by 10, um, portrait or landscape, same idea. You can even scale this and do bigger. Um, one of the first test pieces I did was 18 by 24, um, just so that I could work out some kinks and some ideas that I had for it. And, um, and I think it works. I think it works for either size. So for right now, we're going to be doing um, this 12 by, what did I say, 16? <laughs> 16 uh, landscape size. And then I also just bought paint from the dollar store and we're going to only be using eight colors, and three of them are going to be different shades of green. Um, this is Deco Art. I don't know if you can see that. Deco Art. This is from the dollar store. These are a dollar um, fifty-nine milliliters. Oh, sorry, two s two fluid ounces. And so we've got a leaf green. I don't know if you can see that shade, a leaf green. A hunter green, so kind of a blue green, and then this one's called Christmas green, so kind of a more yellowy green, like a kind of a this is like middle of that. Hopefully, you can see that. I apologize for my poor videography. So, a blue green, uh, a, a warm green, and then a brighter yellowy green. So, that's three of our eight. Then we're going to use uh, an antique gold, uh, yellow ochre would work really good, um, yeah. white, navy blue, it literally is called navy blue, and then some sort of sky blue. This one's called spa blue. It's very turquoise cast to it, but it works with all these pastel -y colors. And then um, raw umber. This one. I don't know where I got it, but it's raw umber and it's a black brown and I th that makes a difference when I was trying this. It does help because then this is your, going to be your darkest dark. So, okay, so that's your, that's our eight paint colors. If you notice, there's no black and we'll talk about that later. Um, I'm just going to be using, uh, make sure you have some paper towel, clean water, um, I'm going to try and do this in a one shot so I've got extra clean water beside me. I'm going to be using just probably two brushes. I like these Filbert ones. Um, the this is like a this is a 16 Filbert and a number 4 and then some kind of palette, something to mix your paints on. This is something that I picked up at the at the thrift store, some kind of china plate. I don't know what you would use this for. But it's got these great little notches in it for putting paintbrushes so they don't roll around. Um, so I'm just going to squeeze out some paint and hopefully I can remember to speak as I'm doing this because when I'm in here in my studio by myself I tend not to talk about what I'm doing. I just do it. And so um, the other thing that I have here if you can see is I have an iPad and so sometimes when I'm painting and doing other pieces of artwork, I'll have um, a photograph that I'm working from. Judy, my friend who asked me to do this, um, sent me some pictures that her son had taken. Her, those were my inspiration, so they're the, that's my jumping off point, those pictures. 
So the first thing we're going to do is I want you to figure out um, your thirds. So kind of mentally, uh, you can either do it with, with a paintbrush, you can do it um, just like kind of thinking about it, but I want you to figure out and break up this canvas, whether it's same thing is going to work whether you're doing it um, in portrait mode or in, <clears throat> in landscape mode. Um, break your break up your canvas into thirds. So the first thing we're going to paint is we're going to use the your light sky color and it doesn't have to be this turquoisey cast. Um, and squeeze a good amount in there so you don't have to stop and, and be fussing with that. And so in my mind I know that so for two of these thirds it's going to be my sky. So if there, 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 there's my thirds. And so if I just go up one third, thinking that my two thirds is going to be sky. So I can just kind of just do a loose, right? And then I'm just going to water this down a little bit. So, and then I'm just going to start laying in some color. I'm just going to get this moving. And from the, almost right away, we're going to be thinking about where our kind of like the, the, the epicenter of the glow is going to be. So I'm going to kind of thinking for this one, it's going to be here, here. Yeah. So just so that like it's not, I didn't put a lot of paint there, but it's just a little something that I can indicate and remind myself where my lightest lights are going to be. Okay, actually I'm going to put a little bit of white out as well so that if I wanted to... And I really hope you're seeing all this, that my big head isn't in the way, actually. So I'm just going to tone down some of these blue And along the edges you could vignette it so that it's got a little bit so it's a little bit more intense. If you wanted you could paint the edges of your canvas beforehand with black. That's the only time I give you the thumbs up to do black. Um, black generally is just too harsh when you're painting unless you're painting I don't know Batman's car. I, <laughs> I don't know. Like, it's generally too harsh in landscapes. Um, it overpowers, it is just a bit much. And then, so I'm just already kind of mapping out where I want um, the epicenter and then the rays are going to be. And that part doesn't need to be as baby because we're going to go back in and deal with that properly. I'm just going to put a little white in here just to lighten this a bit just so I can remind myself later on where everything is going to go. Okay. Alright. And then we're going to just so rinse out your brush for this one. There's going to be times that I'm going to say, don't bother rinsing out your brush, just use what you got on there and let it all mush and blend together. I'm going to take that um, raw umber. Uh, I'm going to do it over here. And already so hopefully on your iPad, or you're watching me on 
your on your iPad or something like that that you can stop and pause and then do what needs to be done and then come back and then press play and watch and then pause and, and that sort of thing. I just want you to know that this is paint. This isn't a holy relic, even though we're trying to do something that is meaningful. Um, but it's paint, and you can paint over it, especially because it's acrylic paint. It dries like that, you can paint over it. If you're not entirely happy with what you've done, try again. So next thing, burnt umber, and we're going to map out, um, we're going to start working on the foreground. So with that in mind, you don't have to paint um, the like everywhere because there's going to be places where we're going to be doing the, the green undergrowth and this is going to be quite dark and it's going to look so dramatic and stark and you're going to be like what is she doing but this is just going to give you an idea once again we're always like trying to get that idea and just lay in some values and just kind of give ourselves a jumping off point so we can establish our lights and our darks and especially things that we want to cover up maybe later on we can um, let them dry while we're working on this To make that stand out and pop and be the focal point and the thing that you're feeling and experiencing, that needs to be the lightest point, essentially. And so for those things to then help it to be the brightest point, you got to make the other things darker. So don't be scared to go dark and slap some paint around because it's paint and it's fun. Right? Okay. Now, you can see I've left this little kind of bit in between because that is now the forest in the distance a little bit. So I'm going to take some of the white and a little bit of that brown and a little bit of this light, what is this, leaf green. So I'm going to start putting out some green. So a little bit of brown, hopefully you can see this, a little bit of brown, a little bit of white and a little bit of that leaf green. And so it's now making kind of this camo color. I don't know how to describe it. Kind of this camo brownie green color. And you want it to be a little bit gray. And just add a little bit of water to that so that it moves nicely. And then I'm going to just put this in here. And that is kind of our, that's, that's the, that's the under, the foliage underneath, the undergrowth, if you want to call it. And that's it going off into the distance in the background. And then you can throw some of that green straight up with it, just to brighten it up here and there. And if you notice, I'm not over worried about that those two touched or blended together. And if some of the texture of the canvas comes out, I'm okay with that too, because then that softens the edge, softens the line. I'm going to add a little bit more white to that. And just I'm going to mix it right there on the canvas, just to give some more interest and variety and just here and there okay okay I'm gonna pop in a little bit more this green and a little bit more white because I want this a little bit lighter I'm happier with that now. Okay. Now would give me a good place to pause, sisters. So 
We're going to take that l bright leaf green and then I'm going to take this Christmas green. Okay, so we're just going to throw in some green. I'm just picking some up and then I'm just putting them on here and letting them blend and then leaving some white or leaving some places where it can do its own thing and just slapping it on. And then I'm going to put some here, just because I can. <laughs> and then same with over here. Just going to throw some green in here so that you get more of an idea of it's sometimes easier to wrap your brain around um, when you see, when you already start seeing the picture coming together. And this doesn't have to be done nicely again, we're just getting, we're just laying in some green. Do a little bit here because that's because I got paint on my brush and I'm not going to waste it and I'm going to use it there anyways at some point. Okay. All right, now I'm going to wash this brush out. Almost using that same pile of that camo green that you made to do this kind of forest floor in the distance. You can use either a round, um, a round brush. Can you see that? Round. This is a number six Daler Rowney brush. Any round brush. Dollar store again. Hooray for the dollar stores. But now this, um, this next paint mixture is going to be using that, if it hasn't dried out already, you're going to make um, brown, a very light brown, a, sort of a grayed brown again. So with brown, the white, and then water this down a bit, and you want this to be quite quite light. And then we're just going to go in and then you're going to make start making trees already. And let's just test this out. It doesn't matter because it's just paint. Ah, I want that a little bit lighter. So I'm going to add more white. But don't worry because at some point you're going to need darker trees. So now that tree has just graduated to being a tree that's a little bit closer to us. So let's see. And it's, that's better. Okay. And then do some that are a little bit closer. And then just keep using that paint that's on there. And if needs be, turn the brush a bit. Go over it. And then just go ahead and do lots of trees. Now, something that I'm not liking about this is the regularity of how they're almost evenly spaced. And I'm not liking that. Even though they're in the distance, I'm not liking that. And so, i got to mix it up at some point. So whether 
that happens when I go through and then do the darker trees that those trees then are covered over some of them or um, but try not to and if it does happen it's fine because we're going to be putting more trees um, and then you can I don't want to say fix it but make it better So, because these are trees that are in, in the distance, and you just want to make it feel like there's lots of trees, but you're not seeing, you're not focused on all the trees. For here, if you can, try not to go over the whitest part. And now you might want to add some branches. Just a few, just to indicate. And if you've got little bumps and stuff like that, Consider that that's where, that's kind of like the knot or the place, or if you've got mistake mistakes that you're not happy with, maybe that's where the branch needs to come out of, or like here, or there. And if okay. So there's some branches just to give support to the canopy that we're going to eventually be putting in here. Okay. So now um, we're going to help the depth of this again. Um, so now we've got these kind of light, washed out, distant trees. And remember, like they're not, they're not perfect, they're not even, they're not solid. Some of them are the brush, the brush fibers, uh, the brush bristles broke and created this. Well, maybe that's a birch tree in the background and it's got white reflecting on it and that sort of thing. So just be okay with, with some of the, the things that happen. Um, we're going to just add, like I said, some depth to this now, and so we're going to take some of the some of that leaf green, and then we're going to water it down quite a bit. And then we're going to add a little tiny bit of that khaki that we had been using, and if it's dried up and you need to make some more, just add like Ugh, a touch, just a touch of the brown. You just want to knock back the brightness of that bright leaf green so that it's not as intense because you want the brighter, more intense greens to be in the foreground um, and in the canopy so that that's because as things go off into the distance they kind of dull down and, and they don't become as um, bold in their in their colors and chroma and that sort of thing. Okay, so I'm just gonna do a little test over here. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna just I'm gonna mute that just a little tiny bit more, but I'm gonna add more water. So basically what you're gonna you're making is a wash and you want it to be a transparent wash and because you're we're working with acrylic, acrylic will cover like solid acrylic will cover what you've already put down. But we want to make this a wash, so that's why it's basically like 
90% water, 10% paint. And so we're just going to be in kind of big, and we want to leave some of that blue poking through. And we're going to come along to the to the this horizon line, and we want that to um, get joined. But then everywhere else, we're going to still allow for the light um, that would be filtering through. So that's why we're breaking this up a bit. And just with big, bold, sloppy strokes, and when you really run out of paint, then go grab some more. Try not to go up too high because we want some of that blue to still shine through the canopy when we get to the canopy part. So only go up, I don't know, I might have even gone up a little bit too high, so maybe only halfway along here. And then I'm just going to take some of that Christmas green and then add that to our, our watery wash. Might even add a little more green and a little more water. And then I'm just going to come in here and see what it might be too watery because now it's not making a difference. And then just I'm going to just darken and move your brush so that you're not getting um, same shapes repeated over and over again. So this is just trying to lead our eye back and show that there's some depth to this. And then I'm just going to take a really watered down version of this, almost like wash your brush out most of the way. And then, and then I'm just going to come in here and then just, just throw in a little bit of that right there. We're going to go over that again with white, but I didn't want it to be this shaft of light that is so bright and not... I wanted that ethereal effect, not um, spotlight effect. Now, good place to pause, and um, I'm going to rinse out some brushes so you can pause now, and then we're going to go on to the next bit. Okay. So now you've done your backwash um, foliage, um, light washes back there, and now we're going to try and start bringing the, the painting forward. So we've been doing all this hazy background stuff, and now we're going to start bringing the trees forward and the foliage forward so that it feels like it's a little more close. So use, going back to that round brush, going to just grab some brown and then just over in this other corner hopefully you can see that. Now I'm not going for my darkest dark yet, dark yet with these trees so I'm going to be toning them down. I'm just going to grab some of that white that we used or that lighter color. I'm just going to like just add some more brown to it and just darken what we had. And so then this is going to be like the mid trees. And so this is where you can fix, or not fix, um, improve on some areas that you weren't quite happy with. And um, let's just, let's just go. And if you feel so inclined, you could already Add some branches in there. I'm just going to thin that out a bit so that it flows nicely. So 
So in my mind, I want I want a couple of these trees to be darker and over on this side. And if you can, try to do your groupings in odd numbers. For whatever reason, it is more visually appealing to have odd numbers. So threes, fives, sevens, nines. And they don't have to be absolutely grouped together because your, your mind almost um, counts them, even if they're not side by side. Your, your brain figures it out that, oh yeah, that's why I like that, because there's an odd number. So there we've got four. Now, where should we put that fifth one? Dun dun dun! And now, so same idea. Grade dark brown. And for this one, I also want to have a big tree based on the photo reference that I got from Alex um, there was three sort of bigger trees One there, ish. I'm going to bring this one down so that it looks like it's even closer to us. So it's going to come down here. And you see I didn't go over my whitest white right here because I wanted to, I don't want to spend the time later on having to like put big glops of white paint. I'm just kind of saving my, my effort for later. Okay, so there's my kind of three bold trees in the closest part and then I'm just going to do some more dark trees over here. Some more water, just so the your paint might flow nicely, but sometimes I find this dollar store paint it dries really quickly, so that's a bonus, but it's also not a bonus because it dries so quickly and you have no um, wiggle room as to its timing and getting it to move how you want it. So there's another three, so it's six. Ooh, not that's a that's an even number. So we need to make it an odd number. So let's throw another tree in. So 
So right now I'm squinting my eyes and I'm using this paintbrush handle to just kind of guesstimate, play with where I want the other tree to live. So many options. You're all probably screaming right now, put it there, put it there, put it there, no, put it there, no, back, over, no, there. <laughs> right? <laughs> when you're always watching somebody else and then they they do it and you're like, no, that's not where I wanted it. Oh, you wrecked it now. Right? That's the commentary that you're doing right now. Well, in your painting, put it where you want it. Okay. I'm just going to make this so it's not such a lumpy tree. Okay. That's okay. Now actually, th there's a couple over here, like this one I want to darken. Now that the paint has dried, I want to darken that one. I, I see it and it should be a little darker. And actually this one I think, I think this one. I want to come all the way down. Now we just bumped him right up. And he's come out now to the forefront. He's even closer than that one is. Yeah, okay. I'm happy with that. Um, you might want to just either rinse out your brush a little bit or get a, a little bit of the extra paint out. Get that back to a decent point. And then with some water, thin out that dark brown. And then just now add some branches and consider where you've got issues, <laughs> um, bumps, places where that it, it didn't go um, all the way. If if you're having trouble, um, like with the, you could rest your hand on something and then I usually use a, what's called a mall stick when I'm painting like on my easel and my canvases on my, like for oil painting. Um, but of course it's on the other side of my studio and I'm not getting up right now. You don't need to get, well, you can get as detailed as you want, but this isn't, this isn't a botanical representation that's going to be in a textbook. This is, if anything we call this, it's an impression. It's a feeling of a place and a time that we're trying to capture. So we're not looking that somebody's going to say, hey, those aren't exactly the right kind of trees that were in the sacred grove. Um, actually, I was listening to a really interesting podcast. If you've had an opportunity to listen to those podcasts put out by the church about um, the first vision, they even talked about that there probably wasn't in in early spring, um, in when Joseph went to the grove. It was probably so early that there wasn't all this undergrowth um, in in full green the bees were humming and the sweet birds were singing but there probably wasn't the kind of undergrowth that we all imagine and in all the seminary videos that we've all watched it was probably a little bit more gray and looking like um, winter had just left recently okay I'm not going to do too much more of those because you could spend hours doing branches because they're just so darn fun. But that gets the idea. Okay. I am just noticed that the trees on this side and a little bit on this side too, they go dark and then they go very light. And I'm feeling like 
I'd like some of these mid-tone ones to come in. And this is a perfect opportunity to assess your painting and say what, what I'd like to, to fix or improve. And so I would like to improve on my kind of mid-range trees. So I'm not even going to rinse out my brush. I'm just going to go back and um, add some white to that watery dark brown that I've been playing around with. And then in somewhere where I'm not going to be scared if I make a tragic error, I'm just going to, let's, let's try this one. Yeah, see? Yeah, that's better already. So you can add new trees. Actually, I want that one a little bit lighter. You can add new trees if you're not happy with the ones you already have. Or you could add, you could just go over the ones that you already have. Oh, my kingdom for a mall stick right now. Do you see the, the the depth now? So we've got these very light ones. Now now they're almost fading away. Right here, there's a very, very light one. But it's adding visually to the depth and the feeling that there's a lot of trees here. Then we've got sort of these mid-tone trees, and then we've got these darker ones that are, are showing that they're much closer to us. Okay. Now would be a good time to pause again. Okay, so now you've worked on your um, different layering of the, the trees and now we're going to work on, like I said, um, the greenery. So for the canopy and the undergrowth. So this is where we're going to be using still, if you notice mostly I've been using this big brush and this little one. Um, you probably will be able to get away with just using two brushes through this whole thing. I have this extra one here because I'm such a fan of this filbert shape that it's kind of my security blanket. Um, and these round ones are just good to have around for doing this fine stuff. When I did the big 18 by 24 painting, I pretty much just used this one and the this one. So the these two these two filbert shapes. Okay, so now onto the greenery for the canopy and the undergrowth. If you haven't already, which you probably haven't because I haven't mentioned it, so get out your blue-green color. Um, in this case, this one's called Hunter Green. I'm just gonna squeeze out a glop of that. I'm going to add some more of this Christmas green because mine's drying out a little bit and plus I'm going to need lots of this. And then we're pretty okay for the leaf green right now. And so a lot of this is going to be mixing, just picking some up and then mixing on the canvas. Oh, and I'm also going to add a little bit, I have a little glop of navy blue over here. And this is going to be our uh, going to help tone down and darken ugh, darken our greens. Okay, so let's start with the undergrowth first because that way you can kind of play with your greens uh, and then when you start feeling more confident with how the greens are working out then you can go and, and do the up tops in the canopy. So I'm going to pull in this dark green, I think it was called hunter green, yeah. I'm just getting them organized for myself so I can read and then tell you about them as I go. And I'm going to just 
splash some in here. This is that darker green. And then I'm going to pick up some of that bright leaf green and then kind of consider that the light, this remember this the heavenly being light is going to be coming and shining on this area. So we're going to try and lighten these areas. And if your brush is doing neat things, but you want to turn it around and have that neat thing happen in a different way, move your brush. And I'm just am playing around and putting some more green back there just to pull you back in. Oh, there's a hair. <laughs> Oh, it's now part of the painting. Ta-da! So the light's coming from here, so these top top parts of the undergrowth are going to be lighter. And then kind of on this side of the of the undergrowth beside this kind of path that we've created, so that it leads your eye in. And then we're kind of doing this. Did you see? So we've got this this bold dark coming this way, and then we've got this shaft of light from the heavenly being light, um, and that's going to be our focal point is pretty much going to be here. And so this this edge of it is going to be a little bit darker because this is the lower edge. And then it's not really a path, but it is a path. And so there's going to be some random growth here and there. And same with over here. This is where the, the darkest points are going to be. And then just haven't washed out my brush yet, so I'm just going to put a tiny bit of the navy blue in, and then I'm just going to come along here and just put that right in there. Just a little bit of that navy blue and going to let it mix with whatever green is left on my paintbrush. I'm going to soften some of those edges so that they just kind of create more interest and variety. And then some of that navy blue over here. Did you see how that paintbrush did that same over and over and over again? It's kind of that repeated pattern. And I'm not a fan of that, so then I'm going to go through and I'm just going to pick up some green and then just change it, fix it up. If I don't like it, fix it. And thinking about the way the light's going and trying to just trying to draw your eye around the painting but also um, create interest and so that there is things to look at and amuse your eyes. And it's your painting. And have fun with it. Now, I want to add some sparkle because do you see these greens here are kind of blending in a little too much? They're this almost the same value. If you squint your eyes, they kind of fall away and they get they're getting sucked into that brown. So I'm just gonna with a little bit of this, it's called antique gold, but if you've got an ochre or um, a muted muted yellow, I'm just going to put a little dot there. So a little bit of that, some of the white, and then I'm going to just here and there start getting some of that light happening. But I'm going to wash my brush out because 
I'm not liking how gray this is going. So I want to brighten up that yellow. <coughs> Excuse me. I want to brighten up that yellow with just some yellow and some white and not have the green in it right now. So I'm going to have it its own entity. So just yellow, just white. The reason why I'm leaving this is because I'm still deciding, and I'm not sure yet, if I'm going to put a Joseph there. This is where my thoughts are going. Maybe Joseph had his moment in the sacred grove. I'm like deciding if this is a representation of a moment in history, or it's a representation of a feeling and a place that we we want to experience. Does, does that make sense? Um, okay. Sorry, I'm painting and not keeping up to speed again. So now this is just that leaf green and white just to get some of this um, idea. So now you understand why there's this little bit and I'm deciding if there's going to be a Joseph there or it's going to be greenery and if it's going to be greenery that's an easy literally of the paintbrush and we've got greenery as you can tell. As you can see, you could just start playing around and picking at this for lots of fun and, and um, yeah, it's fun, right? Painting's fun. That's why we're here. That's why we're doing this. Okay, enough of this. So for the canopy, I'm going to just start with that, what was it, Christmas green. And um, I'm going to thin it out. Just I'm going to make my paintbrush a little bit wet. Um, not sopping wet, but just, just have a little bit of water on it. And then a little bit of that Christmas green. So still I'm using that big brush because I don't want to get so... Uh, I, don't want, I don't want the leaves to be precious. Like we're not in there doing a botanical representation. We're just going to start... <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm just going to put in some green and I don't want to lose all that blue because I still want that sky to come through We're going to be going over this with um, a variety of greens. And just use what's on your brush for as long as you can. And if it's getting lighter and less, that's okay. Because that's going to add to the whole depth effect. And if you notice, I'm going over the brown trunks of the trees. And again, um, moving my paintbrush around so that we're not having a lot of, of the similar shapes repeated too often. 
so that it becomes boring or predictable. Still haven't gone back to get more paint, I'm just using what was ever on here. That really adds a lot to it, doesn't it? Just now that's kind of brought it all together. I hope, yeah, hope you're feeling it now. Now I'm going to go in with a little bit of the uh, stronger Christmas green and just here and there just add some thickness. So thicker foliage, less lights coming in. Um, okay, so just a little bit more of this hunter green, just here and there to maybe add a little more depth. Keeping your blue shining through so it looks like early spring and it's not full leaf. Maybe some of that Christmas green in a thicker variety or consistency. And you remember we were talking a little bit earlier that if we can make other things around our shaft of light um, a little bit darker, that then that's going to make it pop. So I just wanted to add a little more brightness right along the edge there, just just because I felt to and I had a little bit of leftover paint on there. And for me, it's going to be my personal experience of the Grove. So no Joseph. And I'm just going to kind of wash my brush up and just add some variety to the plain brown. Knock it back a bit so that it's not so harsh. Okay, I've got a little bit of leftover of that leaf green and I'm going to just dab that here and there just again for that variety and um, interest and depth. I'm kind of cleaning off my brush on the canvas just with whatever I had left over. It might not work for you because you might still have lots of paint on your brush but it's working for me and I wanted that on there. I'm just going to go in here and then um, kind of make some of these areas of greenery um, a little brighter and more defined especially around the, the base of these trees. So I'm using a little bit of that Christmas green and this leaf green and then just increasing the the bright happy spring colors that we've got going on here. I'm breaking up some of these lines that are just too too much. Okay, the, my GoPro clicked off, but I was saying if you were happened to go to school at Ricks College then in the late 80s, so 86 to probably 88, 89, um, and had the opportunity to have Brother Arlo Coles <clears throat> as a prof, 
one of the things that he repeatedly said is mix it up, change it up, and then he would come and critique your work and he'd be like, mm, no, same, 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 don't want that. And I just remember same, 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 him saying that over and over again and trying to avoid it. And so, amongst other things, you pick up little things from professors and teachers all along that, um, that stick with you and they, they help as you self-evaluate your, your work. Whether it's, pick, a, pick an artistic field, I'm sure you've got somebody that was a good mentor to you that um, their words ring in your head as you're working on stuff. We are really close to being done this. And so the next thing I want you to do is um, get some clean water because we're going to be working with white now and try and give your brush as good a uh, cleaning as possible in, if you're going to use the same brush. Um, if not, actually even get a new brush. Okay, so clean water and the white and find a clean place on your palette and then make a nice watery um, mix of white and water and then we're going to come in here and we're going to start with our light and we're going to just increase our rays of light and you might want to get another piece of paper towel, a clean one that doesn't have green on it. And if you're not happy with how it's going, just soften those edges as you're going around. And then remember how we were talking about where our rays of light are going to go? And now with some thicker white, because I've got this, I don't know if you can see it, if it's showing up on the screen, but I've got a blue line in there and I'm not overly thrilled with it. And then I'm just going to kind of increase my epicenter of the, the, the rays. <clears throat> And because you've used that nice watery white, you can just kind of scumble, it's a real word, look it up, scumble and move around that watery white so that it blends out in a sort of halo effect. And I just want to brighten my white right here in the middle again. And then I'm going to just bring some of that more intense white. I realize that this needs to come forward more because we've got the way the tree is. Guys, that's breaking up. Okay, so there it is. That's a bit better. Okay, I think that's done. You can pick at it more, you can play with it more. Um, I hope that you've enjoyed your time contemplating, reading, painting, and thinking about what the blessings have been for you and your family um, as a result of Joseph Smith's first prayer. And what a blessing it has been to me and my family. And I am forever thankful for the courage and strength of a 14-year-old boy. Thank you and happy painting.